Bidoo. Bidoo. Bidoo spaghetti. Yep. Bidoo spaghetti. It's Bidoo with a plate of spaghetti. Bidoo would like spaghetti. All right. <laughs> And with that, uh, welcome, everyone, to the 10th episode of the uh, podcast. The name of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> was that, was, sorry, was that weird? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was weird, guys. I'm trying to build up uh, some suspense here. But, um, you know, the uh, truth is, name? this is actually the first episode that this show will be going by its new name. Oh, <gasps> the Nintendo Round Table. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, I've never been... mind. I take back my snide remark. It was cool that you were building up hype for your new name. I thought <laughs> yeah. Was cool. <laughs> okay. no, I was like, crap, how did he know that? That's smooth. <laughs> yeah, um, I've been thinking about this change for a while, and I personally just feel like this name reflects what we talk about just a bit more. Um, we do talk enough. about so. tables a lot. We do talk about yeah. round tables. We love, we yeah, love that's, mahogany. Uh, we love mahogany tables. I'm a yeah. fine guy myself. I'm a fan of a nice hand carved mahogany. Um, and and a nice oak. <laughs> in addition to the new name, we also have some new artwork that was made. So if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you'll probably see what I mean right now. And I'll go ahead and throw it up on screen here too, real quick, in case you're watching on YouTube as well. But Speaking of podcast services, if you're listening to one of those platforms, feel free to rate and review the show as it really helps us grow. Also, apologies for this episode going live a little bit later in the month than normal. I know a few of you have been asking where this episode was, and if I'm being honest, I've just been a bit busy streaming and playing Legends Arceus, which we'll get to in a bit, uh, as well as spending time with my family for my birthday, which all happened this weekend. And to top it off, we also got a Pokemon Presents today. So, needless to say, it's been a very busy weekend, to say the least. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, we've got a fun show for you guys today, and to help me work through all of it, I've got a lovely panel of folks with me here to talk about today's Pokemon Presents and more! Starting with introductions, though, today we've got Alex. Thank you, Alex. Good afternoon. Hello. We've got <laughs> Kira. Ayo. We've got Sam. Hello. We've got Amanda. Hello. <laughs> We've got Tris. Ahoy. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's what I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> that is my go-to go 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 greeting. <laughs> and we've got Yo Scheller. Hello! I was gonna say ahoy because I feel like we should normalize saying ahoy because ahoy isn't just for pirates. It's a normal talking phrase that we were originally gonna use for whenever someone answered the telephone. Exactly. But hello, I'm happy this... to be here. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saying ahoy, Tris, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's my go to intro and greeting. And yeah, for the record, make normalize I mean, saying ahoy. Normalize saying ahoy, but correct me if I'm wrong, I thought your thing was hello humans. It is hello humans, but I mean, if we're humans. just but 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 nobody <gasps> else is like doing their intro. I thought we were all just saying hi. Like when you call me on the phone, I don't go hello humans. I'm <laughs> like I just say hello. I Your can't Uber confirm or called. deny that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello humans. I'm Yushiller. I'm happy to be here. That is amazing. All right, well we've got a pretty back packed panel for you guys today. This I think this is the biggest show we've ever had. So thank you guys for tuning in and like giving me your time today. So, um, yes, thank you for joining me on this lovely Sunday and Pokemon Day. Crazy, right? 26 years old today, and Pokemon Company decided to celebrate the occasion with a week's worth of announcements across all of their media leading up to today's Pokemon Presents, which we can go ahead and dive into right now because I, I don't want to talk about it so bad. So, uh, <laughs> starting with you, uh, Amanda, what did you Ooh, think? I get to go of, first. Yeah, of the <laughs> overall... Pokemon presents. Did you have any expectations? Feel like anything was missing? Lay it all on the line. Let's hear it. Well, first of all, I am very happy they have updated Legends Arceus to fix the the or patch the thing with the Cresselia, the Cresselia glitch that will soft lock you out of the game because I was soft locked out of the game, and so now I can oh. play it again and continue. Yeah, you could finally beat it. 
<laughs> exactly. Like I can finally do all the good post game stuff and collect all the stuff I'm supposed to. I don't want to like spoil the game too much other than just, hey, Cresselia's in it. Don't catch it. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter if you don't catch it too early now. Because I caught it too early. Um, and then, oh my gosh, Gen 9. I was hoping for Gen 9 because I was like counting the years in between like each generation of Pokemon. I was like, oh, we're due for another generation. This will mm-hmm. be cool. And then it hit me like how many years I worked when I was at the art center, how many generations of Pokemon I worked through. And I worked through way too many generations of Pokemon at that place. How many was it? <laughs> I started at the tail end of Diamond and Pearl. And I quit during Sun and Moon. Ooh, that's a good wow. 10 lot. years. Yeah. Right? It was eight years because it was right? tail end of oh, okay. Diamond and Pearl. Well, yeah, that's right. true. Wow. Well, congrats to getting where you are now. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this means I will have gone an entire generation. So this will be the first generation. No, wait. Sword and Shield was the first generation outside of the art center. Okay, cool. <laughs> Never mind. I was trying to think, like, what's the first generation, full generation I got to experience outside the art center? So, yeah, that would have been Sword and Shield. And then prior to that would have been Ruby and Sapphire. Because Oof. that was the last one before the art center. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good chunk of time. Um, were you expecting Gen 9 today? I was actually. Yeah, I was thinking we would. this would be when we would get a reveal. And I was thinking we would get Gen 9 this year just because, like, the timing and how many, how long it's been since Sword and Shield, how long it was between Sword and Shield and Sun and Moon, how long it was between Sun and Moon and X and Y. So, like, it added up, like, this, was, this would have been the year for Gen 9. So I definitely expected it. Uh, a reveal or at least like saying that it's going to happen mm-hmm. um and the starters uh, i don't know how i'm gonna choose a starter like i always say <laughs> that every year but these starters are i mean one's a kitty and yeah one's a, how is so that not good. your only answer i know but the duck <laughs> but is so cute because he's a ducky and then there's the apple crocodile which is interesting but i kind of like him he has character so i just i love them all i'm probably <laughs> gonna pick the kitty but i always use water types like as my starter and th- so mm. like kitty though <laughs> yeah no this one's gonna be really tough i think like whenever i first saw this announcement go like first of all to kind of piggyback on what you said i did not expect gen 9 today like i said i woke up this morning and i was like you know it's probably gonna be like a post update or a post game launch update for Legend Arceus, and that's going to be, like, the big thing, because that's what everyone's talking about. And then everything else will probably be, like, you know, just some reiterations of the stuff we got over the week, and then maybe a couple of other things. I don't know. I know Yoshi Schiller was really hoping for Pokemon Pinball, and when he said it, I was kind of like, yeah, that'd be cool, too. So <laughs> We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> and what I was also expecting, which I was surprised we didn't see, is the uh, reveal of what's going to be next for Nintendo Switch Online, the 64 expansion. We just got Majora's Mask. I was hoping Mask. for Pokemon yeah. Puzzle League for sure. Yeah, yeah so I was expecting I like too. whatever next title is going to be revealed to be today, and it's be something Pokemon. But yeah, that's since, what I thought too. Since did we too. didn't get anything, we're we're still kind of left on the hook about what that next title will be. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm glad I, I I'm happy with that being pushed aside for at least for now, just because you know Gen Nine obviously took the place of that in some way. So. Um, I, I'm happy with that, and like you said, all the starters are really, really good. Um, I think out of all of them, which I don't have the notes in front of me, but I believe their names are Sprigatito, uh, Quaxley, and Puikoko were the the three names for these Adorable. for these little guys. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I love each and every single one of them, which is <laughs> really like a huge thing to say for me because usually it's between water and fire starters for me. I really don't all the time love the grass types which some people come after me in streams and comments and stuff for saying that about Rowlet in the past and Snivy and a couple of other fan favorites but um, I think this might be the first generation where I might just like by default pick the grass type which hasn't happened for me since Ruby and Sapphire so it's been a a really really long time since I've been sold on a grass type like that but they're all so good though so I don't even know Mm -hmm. if that's like set in stone but 
Um, they also showed off a couple of other gameplay clips of the game world and the environments and the characters. And just this game overall looks really, really good. You can tell that it's definitely on the Legends Arceus engine, which I think in some ways looks better than it does in Legends Arceus already. So um, that's pretty hype. And um, it's set in Spain, which is cool. I love that. The environments look awesome. And um, I'm just kind of curious uh, what sort of improvements there will be made to the already existing gameplay loop of Legends Arceus. Is it going to feel uniquely different? Is it going to feel like Legends Arceus, but just with a new skin over it? I have so many questions about that. But um, to kind of continue the conversation here, uh, Nintendo Fangirl, what, what did you think of today's presentation overall? Let us know. Overall thoughts. Overall, well, I was also surprised. I really thought that they were going to wait, give it another year before Gen 9, um, particularly mm -hmm. because Sword and Shield, you know, got a lot of criticism, um, some justified, some not justified, but just vocal criticism. And I thought maybe they were going to be like, we're going to polish up Gen 9. It's going to be the most perfect thing ever. And Rubbing their hands they together. They don't even know what hit them. <laughs> but uh, that did not happen. Well, I mean, it might be very good polished game but i'm just mm -hmm. saying uh, i was surprised to see it i really thought we were gonna see a port or let's go johto or oh, uh even just a big big update for um arceus we did get a little update but i, I thought maybe a bigger one i i bet you were gonna get more updates but we'll see mm -hmm. um i was surprised about that the other thing i was really surprised is that there was no mention of the home support update for bdsp yeah. or uh, Arceus, which we know are coming. So I thought like, oh, obviously they're going to say that. And they didn't. Mm -hmm. We also didn't hear anything new about Detective Pikachu, which I've given up hope on. I feel like it might be Gonzo. But who knows? I thought the um, trailer that we saw, like the live action part, was going to be Detective Pikachu. I did until it yeah. showed Game Freak. And I was like, okay, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, that's me too. Um, <laughs> but overall, I mean, I think it was a nice little Pokemon Day presentation, even aside from the Gen 9 news, because we got little updates for all the existing Pokemon stuff. No mm. complaints. Yeah, like overall, like really, really good, aside from the Gen 9 stuff, which I feel like is definitely the announcement that's going to overshadow pretty much everything else that was talked about. <laughs> yeah. um, which is oh, a absolutely. shame because Shiny Piplop is coming to Pokemon Cafe Mix and <laughs> nobody's talking about it. <laughs> Um, Tris, what did you think overall? Let's hear it. I think I think overall, like immediately, like at first, I mean, I went into this expecting there were so many announcements over the last week for like all the mobile games and all the smaller things that they probably would have started with like a little highlight reel or something recapping them. And mm. that's basically exactly what they did. Yeah. So <laughs> at, at, at the very start, my expectations were kind of like in the, in the middle. It's like, okay, it's starting off exactly how I expected. And then we got to Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. And it was, oh, just Shaman. Okay. A little weird that it's only that and nothing else. That's okay. All right. We get to uh, Legends, and it's it's a free content update available today. No, like, big DLC or big expansion. It, it definitely looks fun. But it was, okay, you know, the, this is still keeping along the lines of expectations. Nothing that wowed me yet. And that was when I was kind of wondering, you know, what, what, what comes after this? Because at that point, there was only so much left so much time left in the presents for mm. the the estimated time frame they gave and i'm like well we haven't gotten any of these other things people have been expecting so far and i'm like are they really just gonna close that with gen 9 and then they they go and do it with the <laughs> with, with, with the whole live action sequence with the security guard that um i, I started because I, I did a live stream reaction as well as i'm sure many many of you also did and my first thought when he gets in the Game Freak office and everything starts going crazy, I'm like, oh, no, he's going to fall through a space-time rift and end up Me in Legend. Oh, my Same gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's not what happened because we got, we got shown Gen 9. And this is the first time that I'm, uh, I'm torn on all the starters as well. Like, normally it's one or two. I'm like, definitively, really, really love them. And this one, I love all of them. But I know Fred Coco is my absolute favorite. I love like weird Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, my my literal my literal favorite Pokemon is Chandelure, like the literal just <laughs> chandelier. Yeah. I love I, I love I love the silly weird Pokemon. Yeah, Appleton was my favorite of Gen Eight. Yeah. Like, so 
I saw it for a cocoa, and it's like it's just this little like chili pepper apple slice thing. I'm like, I love it. I have to pick that one now. <laughs> I'm sold. That alone sold me on these games. <laughs> but honestly, they look they they look really good though. They look really good. It looks like it builds off of Legends in a really nice way, and kind of taking the nice steps from there to an even more open world Pokemon. And I'm very curious where they go from there. So it went from like a general thoughts on the present was okay this is all right you know nice for pokemon day to oh great this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah same here i felt the same way and you know that's a good point i wonder what this means for the life like the lifespan of uh legends arceus as a whole because this definitely is going to be the next major game and i wonder oh yeah if the arceus is still going to be supported post uh this this new game launching scarlet and violet and oh i hope so it also like like I said, I have so many questions, but, um, mm-hmm. Kira, what do you think? Yeah, um, <laughs> I kind of went into the direct wanting Let's Go Johto, um, but not expecting it, but I went into it fully expecting Gen 9. I think it just makes sense, you know, it's like three years in between every gen, I think since like black and white at least, so... I was definitely not surprised at all to see Gen 9 here um, until they showed the cinematic where you have, like, the security officer going on. I was like, okay, maybe this doesn't look like a Gen 9 reveal. I did also think that it was going to be Detective Pikachu. Um, yeah. And, hey, we saw the visu- <laughs> we saw the visuals. We saw um, the starters. And so it was, like, a mix of, like, oh, I knew that was going to happen and surprise at the same time. So the way that they did that reveal from, like, a cinematic standpoint was really fun. <laughs> was perfect. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. And I'm overall I'm really impressed by what I saw. I think that visually we're seeing a lot of improvements from Sword and Shield. Um, I absolutely do love the starters. I, I also don't know who I'm going to pick. I'm kind of torn between the water and the grass starter, which is nice because um, the la- like, last several gens I've picked the fire starter. I usually pick fire starter, so it's nice to kind of be like, okay, I'm not going to automatically pick fire starter this time. Um, really <laughs> excited about the, the Spain setting. I think originally I was a little bit bummed that we were seeing Europe again, because we have gotten Europe almost three times in a row. It would have been nice to kind of see another continent, but, um, I think the, the execution of what they've done here is, like, some of these buildings that they've done, um, just looks so nice, and so I'm more okay with it now, especially seeing, like, the fan art that's been coming out of, like, the trainers and the... The Pokemon, I think it's, and to see the reactions from fan, from Spanish fans has been really fun too. Um, so overall, really excited about Gen 9. I don't think it's too early. Um, I think that a lot of people are a little bit worried that maybe they're going to rush this game out because they did just come out with Legends Arceus and they're still fully doing DLC for Arceus and the Diamond and Pearl remakes, but I'm really confident that Game Freak's development team is bigger than we think it is, and I think Game Freak is also willing to reach out more for help, like we've seen with Pokemon Snap with Bandai Namco. Um, I I fully think that I don't think this is going to be rushed. I think the timing it makes complete sense, and mm. I'm I'm excited for it. While at the same time, looking forward to more Arceus and uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl DLC to hold oh, us over. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you, you 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 raise a really good point because it's not it's not like it's not like Game Freak only has one team of developers. Like it's not like they shipped out Pokemon Legends Arceus and then on release day they like, clear everything off the table. Let's talk about the next game. Like it's not like they started <laughs> yeah. it a month ago. Like <laughs> they clearly been right. working on this for a while. There's clearly multiple development teams that work within Game Freak. So this was probably made a lot like alongside Arceus. Yeah, exactly. Wow to think about. Yeah, it is and you know, I think they have to get these starters revealed because things as we've as we noticed last year during the Pokemon Presents, pe- things leak very quickly and very easily. So if they want to get to work on their merchandise for these starters, uh they had to reveal them quick, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man. So you're you're kind of undecided on all the starters too. Fully, I, I at first I was like immediately I was like okay grass cat, but then I start seeing fan art for the for quack quaxley is his quaxley. name quaxley <laughs> quaxley just first of all name hilarious lost my mind when I read that name um so kudos to them but I don't know who knows when November you know 
or it's gonna be November. It's gonna be a November release. But when November rolls around, I could go for uh, Fui Coco for all I know. So I wasn't mm. immediately like hooked to the start. So like, when Sword and Shield was revealed, I was like, oh, I am totally going He Bunny or what's his English name? Um, Score Bunny. I'm mm. definitely going Score Bunny. But for the, I think it's good. You know that you have good designs when when most people cannot choose yet who they want. <laughs> Need to see those evolutions. Yeah. Oh, probably God. Have if Sprigatito yeah, starts like, walking on two legs, I'm, I'm out. But <laughs> until then, I'm funny if everyone game. was Quaxley saying. starts walking on four legs somehow. His wings <laughs> morph into. <laughs> Just swap it around. Yeah, it, it's been really funny seeing the memes of people putting like tape on like the 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 paws of Sprigatito, and they're like, "Stay, stay, <laughs> all four paws you on the ground." <laughs> become you bipedal don't need a green ever. pony, the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I am so scared now. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's 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 what I thought whenever I first saw it, because like I've been duped before with uh, Fennekin. That thing was adorable, and I was like, yeah, Fennekin, and then I got Delphi. I was like, what is that? I think it's nowhere I think near as bad the, as Litten. It's oh, because it's the not. grass starter, you might be okay, because, I mean, Venusaur's quadrupedal, Meganium's quadrupedal, Sceptile isn't, True. Torterra's quadrupedal, though. Your odds are True. okay, is my point. I, I hope so. So what you're actually saying is we're going to get a big buff Quaxley at the end. That's <laughs> exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. I hope so. We're so. about to get muscles, Secret so Agent Quaxley really with the big sniper gun. Just like oh my god, my favorite Kingdom Hearts <laughs> character. <laughs> well, uh, Yo Schiller, why don't you go ahead and uh, follow us up here? Then, what did you think of the the presents this morning? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I did not think we were going to get a main series game at first. I was thinking this was going to be a, a bit more of a filler year with with spinoffs. And so I, I kept thinking, well, we already got Pokemon Snap, and we got Mystery Dungeon not too long ago. And we've already gotten actually a fair share of other stuff in the form of mobile games. So the only other major side game I could think of was pinball. So I was like, you know, I don't think that's out of the question. We'll probably get Pokemon pinball. Let's go. And then as we started getting closer to the presentation, I was thinking if we're going to get a mainline game, it's probably going to be Let's Go Johto. And I think what was steering me in that direction was the fact that Pokemon Go just had this big Johto event. And I, I put all my chips in on that, like, oh, Let's Go Johto's going to be announced tomorrow. So I'm going to drive oh. to Santa Monica and catch a bunch of Johto Pokemon and catch a bunch of legendaries. So that way, when this game gets announced, I can just transfer them all immediately to the game and fill the Pokedex out in, like, three hours. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, and then that wasn't announced. <laughs> and then I questioned why I went to Santa Monica in the first place. But I had fun, so it was okay. And I am pleased with the way they actually did the announcement. Because the fact that you guys were all saying, oh, it's Detective Pikachu... Oh, it's uh, it's gonna be Legends Arceus. I think makes it fun when the reveal is oh, it's Gen Nine, and I saw mm-hmm. a couple of other people have reactions where even after they saw the gameplay, they were like, "Is this a Legends Arceus DLC pack? What is this?" And then they show the starters, and then everyone goes, "Oh, it's Gen Nine. Oh, okay." <laughs> so I like them. I like Fue Coco the most, and at first I wasn't sure why. And then I saw that one fan art picture going around where Quaxley is drawn as Donald Duck and Fue Coco is drawn as a baby Yoshi. And I'm like, oh, baby Yoshi. Oh, that that's why I like it so much. So I, I'm, I'm excited, especially since I, I like the competitive scene a lot in Sword and Shield. I don't like that they cut all the Pokemon, but for what the competitive community became... I like it a lot. Competitive gaming has never been easier in Sword and Shield. It's very easy to get the Pokemon with the nature you want and the IVs you want and the EVs you want. And if you want to change stuff around, you don't have to spend an entire day breeding a new Pokemon. There's items you can use that change everything around. So Sword and Shield make competitive Pokemon very easy. And now we're going to get a sequel to that with elements from Legends Arceus. That just sounds cool to me. So Mm -hmm. I am very excited, even if it's not what I saw coming. And I am definitely curious to see how they're going to handle which Pokemon are going to appear and which ones won't. Because I get the vibe that we're never going to get a Pokemon game that has every single Pokemon in it ever again. I think we're moving past that. And I think that, like, it hurts to say that, but it helps a lot too. Because it means that with games like Pokemon Legends Arceus, they can add evolutions and be like, oh, these are for this game. And then we'll do Generation 9 and these Pokemon. Oh, we can add all these Pokemon because it's for this game. And then when we do Gen 10 five years from now, 
uh, we don't, you know, we, we make this Pokemon for this game, but we don't have to worry about bringing them all back. Like, it makes development in the long run easier. And I think that's also what helps them create these Pokemon games in a faster cycle. Because I know we're all surprised by Gen 9 being announced as early as it is. I mean, I'm surprised too. But in hindsight, it shouldn't be too surprising. Because if we go back to the Pokemon DS games, Diamond Pearl came out in, like, 2006, 2007. And then Platinum came out in 2008, 2009. And then Heart Gold Soul Silver came out in 2009, 2010. And then we moved over to Gen 5 right after that. So they, they've been good at having their different teams. I think they have like three development teams now. And they alternate. And they've been good about maintaining that. And so, yeah, I imagine this Pokemon game was made simultaneously with Legends Arceus. And Legends Arceus might have always been planned from the get-go. But now it's starting to look like it really was a prototype. Like, it, it really was, we're going to make these games at the same time. We're going to use Legends Arceus as a learning experience. And then we're going to use those newfound skills to craft the next Pokemon game. TLDR, yeah, I, I'm excited. I, I <laughs> totally agree with, like, your points of, like, we've seen before in Pokemon the crazy releases really quickly. I mean, we've all lived through, like, 2000 to 2005 where it was like alpha uh it was like ruby sapphire pokemon coliseum fire red leaf green like really yep. fast plus not to mention all of the freaking game boy advance and ds games that came out on the side during that time so it's crazy that people would think that game freak can't handle this amount of releases when honestly we've seen this before for decades yeah yeah Literally i just I, like i thought gen 9 would come out in 2023 and not 2022 like we all knew it was coming but I, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised that it's ready to go now. I am surprised, but I guess I shouldn't have been. That's my point. Yeah, and they have a lot of time, and I think, um, I mean, they've got, they've got so much money, and they've got, I'm sure <laughs> that true. they're, they're um, That's true. I, I mean, because Pokemon Sword and Shield, isn't that now the best-selling one since the originals? It's best or second best, for sure. It's, it's like, it's at least yep. second best. Mm -hmm. And it's $60 yeah, it's a pop, you know, they're definitely making bank. So I, I think... I think I mean, more people need to have more faith in Game Freak these days. I don't know what made people lose faith in them all the time, but I think it's really looking up for Game Freak, especially after the quality that we've seen in RCS. Well, can I touch on that for a sec? Yeah. I don't. I don't want to turn this into like a big debate, but I, I do want to like set set the tone for a couple of things because Game Freak, any game company or any any sort of entertainment company, you never really want to say that you messed up on something. And I, I think they came out saying when they were developing Sword and Shield that there was development trouble. Like, I think they actually did say that. And I think what happened was they were working on a different game at the same time, and that different game was Little Town Hero. And they were trying That's to create right. a new pillar, I think, of their development company that wasn't just Pokemon all the time. And Little Town Hero didn't really pan out. And I think the people who worked on Sword and Shield were a bunch of people who were newer to the development team. So they, they they messed up in the sense that they underestimated the scope of the game they were trying to be because or trying to make. Because you can see things like the wild area. That's trying to be like this MMO RPG type thing with an online community, and it just didn't pan out that way. And I fully understand how difficult it is to make a game. And I'm, I'm not here to bad mouth Game Freak. But I think they used that as a learning experience. And they said, okay, you know, now we, now we know what it takes to make a game on the Switch, like a, a big, full Pokemon game on the Switch. And now that we have that knowledge, we can get back into our routine. Because mm -hmm. uh, ma making a 2D game is so much easier than making a 3D game, right? It, it's, it was easier to make Pokemon games on the Game Boy than it is to make these HD, big-scale, wild-area games on the Switch. But now that they've done it once, twice, three times... Now I think we'll start seeing quality improve. And I think we'll see more trust in Game Freak from now on. I understand why people were burned with Sword and Shield, but I I try to see it from their perspective and say, okay, doesn't mean that they're bad developers, doesn't mean that they're a bad company. It just means that they they had a misstep and they're gonna try and regain their footing. That's how I see it. Mm hmm Yeah. I think it's a great way to look at it, honestly, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Alex. 
<laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, I have like the most little to say. Um, I honestly, the most I little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. I don't know why I thought that was so funny. <laughs> if this doesn't prove to y'all how dumb I am as a person, there you go. Um, I cannot words even on my best days. This is why Ringo Burr all week. Um, honestly, I had no expectations going into this morning's Pokemon Direct. I saw a lot of people going, I really don't think Gen 9 is ri- like right right now like we just got rcs i honestly it was kind of more just like i eh, no expectation let's just see um i am surprised that it they didn't say more about what their plans are for arceus considering that like i thought it did pretty well and also cool we're getting like cool pokemon like free pokeballs and stuff like that but like that and a a a web series, like an animated series. Cool. Great. Oh, yeah. Um, there's like nothing else that they really mentioned about it. It's just there's a small update of things. We might have DLC on the road. We're going to tell you at some point. Yeah. Uh, it's cool that Shaman's getting finally added again to Pokemon BDSP. Um, yeah. Because I've never been able to get a po- I get that legit. I have yeah, one in like my Pokemon Home. For it and everything. I- yeah, I- I've got one in Pokemon Home. Do I remember how I got it? No. Um, <laughs> I think it was redistributed during the black and white era because I think that's how I got mine. I don't even know if I had it from that either. I, I don't. I don't remember. Um, and then, like, Gen Nine, cool. Okay, it, every, it looks good. Um, I was watching the trailer immediately, going, "Pokemon fans are still gonna absolutely hate this for no reason because that's how it goes." Um, and also, I've never wanted to main a grass type in my life, but here we are. I love, uh, well, what is his name again? God, uh, Sprigatito. Sprigatito. Or Sprigatito. Or Sprigatito. Like Weed yeah. Cat is what the internet's called him. Uh, <laughs> oh, poor kitty. I mean, look. Not wrong, I know. but also I love it. Also, now like, I look at Quaxley and just think Donald Duck and also uh, just the, the line from Kingdom Hearts 3 of, this looks like a good place to find some ingredients and I automatically do not like it. Oh, no. <laughs> And I'm just like, I swear to God, if, any, if it says something like that, I'm going to drop kick it to the next dimension. Um, but honestly, like, I I really think the designs for the Pokemon are really interesting this time around. So I am I am intrigued. Yeah, uh, same but here. I don't have much else to say. And I think everyone had much better, like, informed opinions. And I'm just here going, I they look cool and I like the cat. There I like go. green cat. <laughs> green cat's so cute. Yeah. Uh, I, li- I do like the cat, though, even more so, just because it kind of plays a lot on the um, the Spanish inspiration for the region. Um, yeah, and it's which, so happy looking. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys have already seen it, but the, the actual name of the Pokemon itself, I don't know where the first part of it comes from, but got It's like a sprig of, like, means, herbal. Like, you yeah. know, like a sprig of parsley or something. Oh. Yeah, like a natural sprig. Okay, well, then it basically just means, like, like, the second part, Catito, means little cat, like baby cat. And then mm-hmm. I guess that part means, like, what did you say? It was, like, a sprit or something? Sprig. Sprig is, like, a, it's, like, part of a plant, part of a, like, oh. branch. Plant you know, like, a sprig of thyme or rosemary, like, you'll see in a yeah. recipe. Like, sprig. And then you want to put a sprig of rosemary on the top and cook it. Mmm. Okay, well, yeah. Well, there you go. That makes, like, total sense, then. I don't know about Fue Coco, and I, Fue I guess quietly. In Spanish is fire, and co- uh, cocodrilo is crocodile. Yep. Oh, my God. How do I not know? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm such a bad... Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> I had to okay. look these up. You're so fine. So <laughs> that makes sense. And then I guess Quaxley is just Quaxley. Like, Quaxley's ducks go quack. Quaxley is Donald yeah. Duck. Like, uh, I, found, I found this uh, tweet as I was uh, just now, and it's... Oh my gosh! Yeah, I, <laughs> accurate. I oh love, my gosh, I love it. I love the Let's the meme it. potential of this little guy, this little duck. All He's of great. these have meme comp- potential. <laughs> uh, I've seen, I've seen uh, the fire type be compared to the box of a McDonald's Happy Meal for some reason. <laughs> okay. My, my only issue with the water why. starter. 
already have a ducklet. Like I used a ducklet in Gen yeah. Five. Yeah. I evolved it into Swana. I I love Swana. So I have I have no reason to get another duck. And before you guys are like, oh, you can never have too many ducks. I can have too many ducks. You can one of the have. Other, well, one of the other starters is this cute little Yoshi looking thing. Especially Listen, when Yoshi those really. ducks are in a row. My friendship with Ducklet over. Quaxley is my new best friend. I got. Quaxley I like the ugly me. Pokemon that evolve into beautiful things. I use Milotic too. So this little Yoshi. I love thing, Milotic. Yeah, this, this Yoshi looking thing. He's he and I are gonna be best buddies. What if it doesn't evolve into a beautiful thing? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I was about to address that. I think uh-huh. I was thinking about this because Sprigatito, like obviously, I love that thing. It's cute. It's adorable. But if it evolves into something like two legged or like weird looking, oh. then nah, you know, stonks go down. But. <laughs> The weird thing about Quaxley for me, the more I think about it, the more I think I would like it if it evolved into, like, some buff guy or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, some two-legged buff dude, like, Machoke some, or some, something. Like, some, buff some, duck I think that just was, cracks me up right now. <laughs> like, that is the only exception. It, no, that would be so funny. <laughs> like, somehow that would make it, like, make me like it even more. That just does not apply to any of the other starters I- here. I, I've been seeing, like, fan art and, like, people talking about how Quaxley makes them think of, like, what if its evolutionary line was inspired by, like, pirates? Yeah. And, like, now that's all Now that's all I want to see. Ooh. Like, that's all I want to see now. <laughs> Pirate Quaxley. Um, Amanda, you're going to like this tweet that I just came across. Uh, I just found one. I'm going to post it to you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I love that one. Caballeros. Oh! With the three birds. With the best bird, Rowlet. It also has Rowlet, which is also best bird, so... I love Rowlet. Amazing. What was the one that you had, Amanda? I am posting it right now. Let's I need see. to describe you... these for people who are listening. I, I can throw them on screen. Oh, I, I, I want to hear everybody's sure. reaction. Uh, for first. those. Oh, that's so right. No, first... you're right for the for the streaming. Uh, so the first image from Alex was podcast, Ducktales, right? But uh, mm. I think it's like Louis, the one the one with the blue shirt. Dewey. I don't... Thank you. Uh, with yep. uh, Quaxley. And then I, made, yeah. I found another one that was Quaxley, uh, Chikorita, and Rowlet as the three caballeros. And if you haven't you seen go. that, go watch it on Disney+. Plus. It's a little problematic, but it's a thing. Audio description. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't even know how to describe this for podcast listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Hey, <laughs> Amanda, Amanda, I respect you so much. What the f*** is this? <laughs> well, it specifically says retweet to scare a Pokemon fan. I don't even. <laughs> All right. What kind I of love the little fake leaves are these? Yeah, Yo Schiller, attempt I'll to describe, describe this. It. All right. So this is artwork drawn by a Twitter user whose name I believe is pronounced Z- Zetristan. And he basically drew what he believes the final evolutions of every starter will look like. So the grass starter is made to look like a big, buff, super serious Incineroar knockoff with. with, with leaves instead of fur and, and a loincloth <laughs> yeah yes. and a leaf loincloth yes 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 <laughs> perfect censorship <laughs> and then the water starter evolves into what i assume is supposed to be like a female Furry model, fuel a female model of a duck like <laughs> it's got lipstick picture, like, yeah like what, what you think stereotypical female character looks like in a show it's it's a duck and <laughs> And then the fire starter is made to look like big, big dumb alligator man. And French fries. I was going to say, it looks like he has French fries coming out of his head. Yeah, he's, he's, he's fully, got big, fully embracing big the McDonald's leg. aesthetic. Yeah, big, big I, 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 I'd like to point out that this guy is a Tristan. He's a UI artist at, at, at uh, Eidos Montreal. At, at Square Enos. <laughs> Amazing. Nice. Okay. Wow. Um, my man. I, I also, want to, I, I also want to point out, that as we talked about this this scary uh, concept of evolution for Sprigatito, it's like a tiny Incineroar, which is what's really funny to me, too. Don't, like, don't this, put like, that this out thing in looks like muscular and threatening, and it's like half the size of the other two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay, well, hor- horrifying uh, final evolutions for these little guys aside. Um, I do have a question, right, to kind of pose this to the entire round table as a whole, okay? Um, I've been thinking about this for a couple weeks, mainly because whenever I was playing um, Legends Arceus on Twitch, the first day that I was live, somebody asked me this question, and I just haven't been able to stop thinking about it. And now it's come back to the forefront of my mind, especially considering what we saw today. So, question for the table is, if Game Freak was to make new Pokemon games, right? And obviously they are. 
Um, would you be okay with the new like default formula for these games to be Legends Arceus inspired? And if not, uh, what changes would you make to that formula, if any? Starting with you, Amanda. Ooh. You know, I kind of like Legends Arceus being its own thing, and I would like to see more Legends Arceus type games um, because I really love that exploration aspect. Um, But I... I don't know that I want that in like a mainline Pokemon game because I like the going from city to city and battling in gems and earning like your badges and all of that. So I think the art style in Pokemon Legends Arceus looks great and I love that it's like, you know, you see the Pokemon running around and it looks like they're doing that again in this one. So I like that a lot. I don't like that they would be high. I never liked how they would just be hiding in the grass and you would just come upon a Pokemon in like blue and you couldn't like do anything about it unless you wanted to run and then lose XP. Uh, mm. But that's uh, now I'm just rambling here. But <laughs> I yeah, t- the too long didn't read is I like Legends Arceus. I would love to see more games like that, like of the other regions and like the formation of those regions and then the modern pokemon games i like to see them in more modern versions yeah yeah that makes sense um yo Schiller, i want to hear your thoughts what do you think yeah, about I, this gameplay loop i i wouldn't mind if it continued the gameplay style of legends arceus although i feel as though naming the game legends arceus in the first place already allowed for the pokemon company to make a separate series of Pokemon games with that titling system. Like, if they wanted to make a sequel, they just call it Pokemon Legends something else. And say, and then we'd all go, oh yeah, the Pokemon Legends games. Those are the big open world ones. But the other games that don't have Legends in the title, yeah, that's, that's the traditional tur- turn-based battle style that we've all come to know and love. So, I guess the Pokemon Legends titling system now will simply refer to games that take place in the past, like a long time ago, because it's it's a legend. Mm-hmm. It's a long time ago, so if they make a sequel to Pokemon Legends Arceus and they do Pokemon Legends Keldeo or Victini or something for Gen 5, if that's what they're doing next, then I guess that has to take place a long time ago, Revolutionary War or something, I don't know. So what I assume <laughs> will happen next is Pokemon games will probably stay in this style, but they're going to run into a similar problem that actually The Legend of Zelda has, where the naming system becomes irrelevant and you just have to look at the back of the box to see what the gameplay style is <laughs> because legend of zelda has the top down zelda games and it has the full on big 3D zelda games right like you got breath yeah. of the wild but then you've also got links awakening on the same system and they play completely differently and at any time nintendo can make another zelda game in either style but it'll still just be called the legend of zelda so I think Pokemon will do the same thing. They'll make any Pokemon game at any time, but it'll just be called Pokemon. Hmm. To answer your question, yes, mm. I am a okay with it being a big 3D, hopefully open world game. And hey, I'm mainly hoping that there's a competitive element to it because that's the part that excites me the most. Yeah, I think definitely this is going to be the new platform in which they adopt the BGC and stuff. And, you know, now that we're kind of talking about... Uh, the possibilities of what this game will look like. I think it is worth noting uh, that in their marketing copy for this game already, that they are calling it an open world experience. Um, Don't really know what the degree to that is. Obviously, a lot of that is still open to speculation. But from what I've seen in the trailers and just overall the verbiage that they're choosing to use, it seems to me like this is going to be pretty similar to the way that the gameplay loop works for Legends Arceus. I don't know ow, how much in common that they're going to have, but it seems to me like that's going to be the general basis for what they're trying to do with uh, Scarlet and Violet, which I feel like we haven't said that name all that much today. Which is weird. Scarlet and Violet. Got to get that in my name. Got to get in my head. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but uh, considering all these implications and, you know, um, sort of uh, implied uh, gameplay inspirations and stuff, Tris, what would you think about pokemon adopting this whole open world style moving forward so i'm kind of with the others where i feel like uh pokemon legends by its name implies there might do like their own series on that in terms of uh uh, a a series of pokemon games that play more like that and build off of that the most 
But I actually think this game, uh, Scarlet and Violet, will be more like a blending of that and the mainline Pokemon games. So there's a lot of elements in Legends Arceus that I think would be great gameplay loops and mechanics to carry over to the main games to make those even more accessible to even more people. Like, I don't know why this is the first thing to come to mind, but like the, the, the grit sand or whatever all those things are to affect the, the IVs. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that, and because that, that opens up the competitive side of Pokemon for even more players in a game that probably will have a decently focused competitive scene because it's mainline Pokemon. That would be a great thing to carry over. Maybe the way the move pools work, for example. But the main core gameplay loop of uh, catching Pokemon whenever uh, a threat posed by alpha Pokemon and Pokemon just targeting the, the, the player, I don't see those carrying over as much, especially since that was treated as a, because they're in the past, the world is so dangerous, and they're not really, they haven't learned to coexist with Pokemon yet. So I don't know if we'll get that level of danger here in this game. Mm. So I almost feel like it might be more like a proper evolution of the wild area from Sword and Shield, um, where you know you had this big open area to explore in. Encountering a Pokemon will still start a Pokemon battle. Um, so maybe that'll interject with the pacing a bit here compared to Pokemon Legends. I don't know, but I do think I I don't I wouldn't want one-to-one what Pokemon Legends has as the the staple go-to new Pokemon gameplay. I would like them to take elements from it and incorporate that into the main series, though. Yeah, I I, I, that, I think I agree with that entirely, to be honest. Because um, a, a couple of the things that Legends Arceus does with its, you know, uh, mechanics and way that it intends you to explore the world kind of feels like it would mm-hmm. be exclusive and tied to the uh, the world that it's already built, right? So, for example, like the Pokedex. Yeah. Uh, the whole reason why you're out doing research tasks is because they don't know, like, really a whole lot about Pokemon as a whole. Like, they're, they're researching them simply because they don't know anything about them. And your right. whole job in that game was to kind of, you know, take research notes in the field and kind of mark, like, okay, this is what this Pokemon does, and this is their behaviors, and this is considered a dangerous Pokemon, or, like, you know, whatever, right? And I don't really think that that would be the same case for... Uh, for a more modern Pokemon game like Scarlet and Violet. So, um, I'm hoping, at least, you know, to answer my own question, I'm, I'm hoping, at least for this game, it doesn't quite feel the same one-to-one in that way. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, to kind of agree with you, I think it'd be great if they took a lot of inspiration from Legends Arceus, but maybe not one-to-one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. who hasn't gone yet? I haven't been keeping track <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. All right, let's hear it. Uh, okay. I don't have too much more to say because I think you all have pretty much nailed it on the head. But I would just say for me, Legends Arceus and the idea of like a potential Legends style series going forward, um, to me, it's partially about the gameplay, but also a lot of it is just the fact that it's kind of pokedex forward catching forward as opposed to battle forward um so i like Mm. the idea of kind of the of the mechanics carrying over to a mainline new gen 9 game but having that be the more stereotypical battle forward gym um gyms in each town or gyms spread across this open world area whatever it is um with just kind of the mechanics coming in not necessarily every bit of it because i love legends and i'm a person who loves like the pokedex completion stuff so i want that to be its own separate thing that's not being tainted by little random trainer battles everywhere i have the opposite (laughs) opinion of other people i think but um, but i do i really would like them to stay at least partially separate but i also really like the gameplay in arceus so i'd be cool with that coming over interesting that's a good way to put it too because like you're right that uh Arceus's main point of focus was mostly just the catching and study of not really the battles. Those kind of felt like more of an accessory than anything else. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I really hope this new one kind of brings it back and reels it into the more battle trainer focus, kind of like you were saying. So I think mm-hmm. that perfectly describes kind of what I was hoping for with this one. Um, uh, who, who's left? Kira, Alex, and Yo Schiller, right? Or Amanda? I, I already, oh, I already, so already I've already gone. Okay. I haven't said anything. All right, go ahead. 
Uh, I mean, I also don't know how much I have to say. Um, <laughs> honestly, I would be okay if they were kept mostly separate. Um, I do kind of agree with the idea that, like, the Pokemon Legends as a brand for the whole thing would be totally fine with me. Uh, I liked... I, I don't really think there was anything wrong with the Pokemon formula. It was getting a little stale because it was all that we had. Now that we have another version of the game that, like, is good, uh, I don't mind having them just stay separate because I think the issue I came across is there's only so much crafting that, I ha that I'll do before I start getting bored and getting like, oh, God, now I have to go back and grind for more materials again. And, oh, no, now I'm out of inventory space. <laughs> ah, that gets boring and really tedious after a while. Uh, and I'm not about it. But I, I think there there is room for both. I don't know how much you could really... I mean, there's some stuff, like, I, I would appreciate if some stuff was a little bit more streamlined. Like, I do appreciate the streamlineness of some of their, the, the features, but I'd be okay with them being separate more and going back to more hmm. traditional for Gen 9. Yeah. Like, the, uh, wow. I didn't even think about that either, because you're right. Um, for, for those that maybe, you know, don't really like the, the same gameplay formula being used over and over for the main series games. I mean, you do have other options outside of that as well. Like, Let's Go is also another example of the... It's it's similar with a twist where Let's mm -hmm. Go because it was the... This is the Pokemon Go integration because we're trying to get some more people on. This would be a great way to do it. Sure. Yeah. There is also that. And maybe it's because I get a little concerned when it comes to giant open world games because there's just too much going on but you feel like you get overwhelmed when the world is super big oh yeah because if you're like someone that doesn't have time to play a lot of video games going into something like that like it takes takes you forever like i i have i have an issue with that with all open world games it was a bit of a problem with breath of the wild it was it's also a problem with horizon zero dawn um which i've been playing currently and like <laughs> i still have that same kind of feeling with arceus to a degree. Mm -hmm. You mean you don't like going around collecting all the wisps everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> There's always so much no of that before I just get tired. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> nope. That was the first thing I thought of too. I'm like, oh, so they even have the Korok collector and I hated it. Wisps. I hate it. I swear to God, if there's over, if there's more than a hundred, I'm going to fight somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know actually... who I'm going to fight. I think we actually have someone on this call that went through the trouble of getting all the wisps in the game, if I'm not mistaken, Kira. <laughs> all the disappointment, the exasperation. <laughs> She's Was so it done. even worth it? Um, I mean, I'll keep it spoiler free because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are still trying to get them all. You do need to do it if you want to. Catch them. I'm just going to say that. To catch them all. Hey, can I borrow the Pokemon okay. you got from it? <laughs> yeah, you can. Try that. <laughs> um, but if you don't mind sharing my own opinions on what I think about this, I I have a, heavily of of the opinion that legends that the legends series and the mainline series should stay separate because I think you know keep legends something that's special. Um, I think that yeah, elements of the game can be put into Scarlet and Violet. Um, for example, like. The one thing that I would love to see in Scarlet and Violet that takes from Pokemon Legends Arceus is the seamless transitions for battles. Like, getting yes. into battle, getting out of battle, getting your um, experience points and stuff like that. That feels so good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind it not being where I'm throwing Pokeballs at the, po at the Pokemon all the time. And I think Alex had a really good point when he said that it can be really overwhelming um, to have to, like, craft all these things. And... And, like, I don't find Legends Arceus to be a relaxing game, whereas I find Pokemon games in general to be fairly relaxing. Um, but when, you're ha when you have a Luxray on your butt the entire time, like, it's not. It's a little life. bit stressful. Right. So I do hope that... I I'm t I've never had a problem with tra traditional Pokemon gameplay. I've never gotten sick of it personally. Um, yeah, same. I do Right, right. So I don't, I don't really. See, but I do at the same time. I think that a lot when Legends Arceus came out, I think a lot of people saw the gameplay loop for the first time, 
were very interested and then picked it up. And those same, I hate to put it this way, but those same quote unquote casual fans will want this same gameplay for new Pokemon games um, because maybe they've fallen out of Pokemon uh, in the past. But I just think, I just think it's a better idea to keep them separate, keep keep Legends special. I mean, th we're talking about a fan base who gets tired of things very, very quickly. So if the Legends style of gameplay is implemented in both games, are people going to get tired of that too? I mean, you can't really make everyone happy. I think the way you make everyone happy is having two different styles of gameplay for the two different games. I mean, we, we see this with Metroid, we see this with Legend of Zelda. We're seeing this with Sonic the Hedgehog these days, too. So that's basically my opinion is keep it separate. Hmm. Would you be okay with, like, Scarlet and Violet taking a few, like, uh, inspirations? Yeah, unquote, no, absolutely. Legends? Absolutely. Okay. Like, again, with the seamless transitions for battle being the biggest one, free camera, I want that for the mainly Pokemon games. I just don't want... Pokemon on my butt the entire time, killing me. <laughs> and, hold, on, um, no. hold on, though. Free camera, didn't it? Wasn't that in Sword and Shield, or was it only during yeah. the like big wild? In the areas? wild area. It was only in the wild, the wild area. area. Yeah. yeah. I would. I hope for a free camera for the whole game. Gotcha. But that's a that's a lot to ask. I think maybe for a main line. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what they do. But yeah, definitely elements, um, like quality of life elements for sure, need to be taken from Pokemon Legends Arceus, but it doesn't need to be a whole overhaul of the original Pokemon formula in my opinion. Right. You, you, um, the way you talk about it, it makes me think that you and Amanda have a little bit of the same opinion where every, you guys are kind of okay, you know, with uh, where the where the formula was and like the gym battles and uh, like badges, it's all good, you know? <laughs> right, yeah, it is. Your, and it, yeah. your opinion is pretty much the same as mine. And, like, <laughs> It makes it so much more exciting whenever they decide to release, I don't know, Pokemon Legends Celebi. Like, it, it... I want Jirachi so bad. Oh, don't get me started. Oh, my God. Don't Pokemon get Alex Let's started. Let's go, Johto. Yeah, Pokemon man. Legends Johto. <laughs> and Pokemon Pinball Johto. <laughs> Pokemon Legends Pinball. I'd also like to take a second to just. Uh... Pokemon Legends Pinball? Now you're talking. <laughs> 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 that I is. I quickly just Woo! make a second to point out that apparently Open. on Twitter, uh, Donald Duck is now trending for Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sounds yeah. right. Which sounds about <laughs> it. Which just. Yep. That that it tracks. tracks. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> I don't. I. Uh, I am so confused. I think life. you guys' point is valid, though. I do. Um, I. I, I I, I never really got the opinion that like Pokemon needed to shake things up and completely 180 their existing format for things. I kind of like the, you know, traveling from city to city, collecting gym badges There's and filling up my Pokedex. Like I don't really feel like I ever got tired of that. So I didn't either. There's a reason why Pokemon all... is like the most successful company. It's like they don't do mm -hmm. any real updates and they're still so popular. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. You just have all these, like, Twitter takes right now that's like, Pokemon, like, Game Freak can never go back after this. And, like, on some certain elements, yeah, they, they shouldn't go back on some certain things. They shouldn't make the game, uh, like... Random encounters. Mm -hmm. I can leave. I can live without well, random encounters. I, I do actually <laughs> like random encounters. I don't mind the random encounters. But it's just, like, you have all these takes on Twitter, like, oh, Game Freak, they have to do every single game like this from now on. It's like, that's just not true. Like, people still <laughs> I, love traditional Pokemon. I sometimes just cannot stand Pokemon fans as a whole, because they're, they call them Pokemon fans, and then they just will literally just, like, be Don't so get entitled. Me started on Pokemon yep. Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon Twitter <laughs> is the worst. Yeah. Do not even look at my mentions. It's, uh, it's so bad. Yeah, po Pokemon Twitter sure. like... No happiness allowed. Like, if you like something, no, you can't. <laughs> yeah. I, that sounds I, it up pretty well, yeah. I hate it. <laughs> I hate But, I mean, reality. you know, we can ignore them and whatever Game Freak decides to do with Scarlet and Violet, I'm pretty sure I'll be very happy with. I was not at all upset with many things from Sword and Shield, and a lot of people yeah. express their concerns for a lot of things for Sword and Shield, and I, per like, you know, everyone's entitled to opinion, but... I didn't feel that way at all about Sword and Shield. I thought no, I loved Sword and Shield. <laughs> yeah. I loved. Yeah. I liked Sword and Shield. I liked them. They I did good. too. The they thing with Sword and Shield 
I have no interest in replaying that game single player, but it's the most fun I've ever had with multiplayer, with the raid battles and the oh, one hundred percent. And as I said earlier, how easy it was to get into competitive. Everything I did was awesome. I remember when that game first came out, and I was helping Gerard the Completionist complete it, and it was so fun connecting with friends I hadn't spoken to in a while, just to do like a Gucci raid battle. I'd have like people <laughs> messaging me on Discord, and they're like, "Hey, can I join your raid battle?" I'm like, "Yeah, you can join my raid battle. Get in here." So. I, I I don't think we're gonna get raid battles again, but I hope we have Something that. Something else, multiplayer. Yeah, like the the fun of mo Pokemon, to me at least, has been its multiplayer in recent years. And now that we live in a world where you can play online with ease and stuff like that, I'm really hoping that they have some sort of captivating multiplayer component that really draws me in. And while a nice single player would obviously be great, if it just has a strong multiplayer. That'll make up for whatever single player might be lacking in. That's how I see it. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a really good point, too. Like, th there are so many things that Sword and Shield is just the best at. That One of those things being multiplayer and competitive. Like, there, there's no other game in the Pokemon history where I felt like it was something that I looked forward to doing as much as I did with Sword and Shield. So that, that that's actually a really good point, too. But uh, Scarlet and Violet... Um, I guess to kind of just tie this whole section up in a nice little bow, uh, what do we think of the names? Yay? Nay? Yay I mean, now. I think it's fine. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like think purple. about it. They were going to run out of stones and stuff eventually. <laughs> we Like, where else do you go from, like, sword and shield, like, weapons? What, spear? I mean, it's better than letters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's Pokemon <laughs> left and right. I'd be getting Ooh. a Pokemon left version. Well, yeah. I need to, because I'm a lefty. <laughs> At first, yeah, I was yeah. Pokemon concerned. cat and dog. That would well, no, that doesn't. That's that doesn't not know. That, that would confuse me with animals. This, but at first, I was concerned because I didn't, I didn't feel like Scarlet and Violet were opposites, and someone said, "No, they're opposites on the light spectrum." And I was like, "Oh, oh, okay. that's right." So now I'm into yeah. It. <gasps> well, you didn't think of that. They don't have to be direct opposites, right? Like, a diamond isn't the opposite of a pearl, No, is it? but, like, no. they just feel, so cool, like, though. Scarlet and Violet just felt like two colors that were, like, not really opposed mm -hmm. to each other. Fair enough. But uh, Until someone told me that on the light uh, spectrum, and I was like, wow. yes, that makes, that makes sense. sense. I love it now. I didn't understand. Yeah, because I thought it was an odd choice, but that makes sense now. I don't, this is how bad my brain is right now. I was like, Scarlet's on the, the, the light spectrum. It's red. I'm... <laughs> what is wrong with me today? Ah. Listen, everyone listening at I home, Alex is having this. a day. <laughs> well, it, it, it goes oh, even beyond no. just the, the the colors too, though, because I think um, when you really look at it, I mean, as, as someone has had to look at it a bit for the last few hours, um, oh, yeah, people exactly. have been really pe people have been people have been really pointing out the fact that um, uh, Violet. Uh, and Scarlet are also constantly represented in the live action sequence with the security guard. Uh, there's a lot of grapes and oranges. Oh. I like grapes. And oh. also, and also, Violet is represented with circles, but Scarlet is represented with triangles. I like so they're, they're definitely like in the trailer or <laughs> as a whole. I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the trailer, specifically I'm... in the uh, the segments with the the security guard. I'm kind of wondering more so, what the point of that more so when it comes back to him afterwards. What but... is the point of that? What was the, the significance of the security guard? That's what I don't understand. What's, it's the it's to have a was... fun trailer, Alex. To yeah, have a fun <laughs> made everyone think that it was gonna be Detective Pikachu because yeah. we were all duped. So you yeah. think it's yeah. so yeah. really, it was really it's a Five version. Nights at Freddy's like, Pokemon uh, version. Oh, oh it's god, like at, it's like looking at the Pokemon Let's Go trailer, and being like, "What was the point of the kid riding the bike at the beginning?" It's like to, to show him going home and playing Pokemon. Like I don't know what I, to tell you. I don't know what to tell myself either. So it makes me feel better. It's, it's probably insignificant. It's just a fun way to be like, okay, how do we reveal this game? Oh, we show him go into an office room, and he fumbles around a bit, and then a big white light shoots out of a picture frame behind him, and it sucks him into the game trailer. Like that. That's, <laughs> that's an explanation that's I would totally be fine with. That's it. It's, that's it. That, there, I, that's there's the there's some things that don't need looking Listen, into. Alex, I know really why there was a police officer there. It's because he was raiding the Game Freak offices looking for the, the concept art of Sprigatito's two-legged, standing on two, <laughs> two hind legs concept art and going to go burn it. Yeah. He was doing a solid Not favor. all heroes wear capes. <laughs> Some of them wear police officer uniforms. 
<laughs> oh oh man. <laughs> um, okay, but yeah, I I I I think I agree. Yeah, I, I do I do like the names. Um, whenever I first saw them, I was kind of like, whoa, that's uh doesn't sound real. But I guess you know, looking back at it, I kind of felt the same way about uh, Sword and Shield, and pretty much every other Pokemon game before this. I think it's just getting used to the names and seeing them around more often will get me nice and warmed up to them and the starters and everything else that goes along with it because right now it all just kind of feels like wow that doesn't look like a thing this i can't believe my eyes right now but you know i guess now, by now, i have a question yeah based up? on the information right now which version are you gonna get and i don't want to hear oh i gotta wait to see more like if you had to pick right now Scarlet or Violet, Ooh. based on this five minutes of information yes. that we got. What are you going to pick? Yes. Where, um, where, mind you, the only difference we know of is that the player character's default outfit is different. Yeah. yeah. So, like, based on title <laughs> alone, which one are you going to get? Yes. Um, you know, I think mine is a little bit more uh, lame, superficial, like, not even a reason by comparison to maybe anybody else's, but... Mine is probably going to be violet because it's closer to my favorite color, blue. So okay. that's, fair. <laughs> that's reason enough. Not yeah, knowing yeah. anything else about the Pretty game, the probably that one. <laughs> Pretty much same, yeah. I'm going to get violet scarlet. Scarlet, like purple. You're going to be I scarlet like getting your And I look good in I'm purple, so I'm getting violet. Wow. Is, is everyone here getting violet? I think me? you're the only one. Potentially, <laughs> potentially All right, but good, I, also good, know my, I also know me, I'll probably just get both. Which is why I just said yes. Oh, uh, yeah, probably that's right. also true. That's right. Although, I like purple as a color in general, so I, I'm easing towards that, at least at first. This is mm. like when everyone got Brilliant Diamond, and then there, everyone was like, does anyone have a Magby? And I'm like, oh, you messed up. You messed up. You all bought Brilliant Diamond, and now you're Where all coming you? back to me. Back to me. I had a lot of messages about that, too, because I played Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to get Pearl, but the main reason was just for Dialga, and then, like, didn't realize that Calcia was also there. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody else other than me give a definitive answer on which starter they're picking? Also, I said I'm no, because I, I, I need Ken. Like, oh, Are you kidding? Okay, I need okay, to see their over, final over, evolutions yeah. because if we get Green Tony the Tiger, I, I don't know if I can handle that. that. I can't do I'm it. Getting, I'm getting Fuego Boy, but you know what? If, yeah, me too. If they announce that <laughs> Bayleaf is in this game and it's a Violet <laughs> exclusive. Then I will toss my copy of Scarlet out the window, and I will go get Violet. <laughs> Don't what toss it out the window. The games are expensive. What are the odds? One in eight ninety-eight at this time. Uh, with their soon, we're probably gonna get to like nine fifty by the time Generation Nine is over. I don't think they're gonna add too many more Pokemon. It's probably one in nine fifty that Bayleaf will be in the game. You know, actually three in nine fifty because they'd have to add the whole line. It'd be weird that it's just Bayleaf. Not that I'd be complaining, but it would it would be weird to have Bayleaf and not. Chikorita. You know that, now, that would be yes. <laughs> now that I pull up these starters on my on my other screen here, I think Boy yeah. Coco definitely looks like a Pokemon that you would pick, Yoshi. Yeah, he's he's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Literally looks like a baby Yoshi. Yeah, he is, he's a Yoshi. Like I got I gotta have him. What was the name of those ones? And uh, it was uh, New Super Mario Brothers. Oh, was do they have like... names? Does, I think they were just the baby Yoshis, yeah. yeah th Are they just baby Yoshis? The, to the Toads have names. They're Buckleberry and Finn. I don't remember the yellow one's name. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, you just made that up. No, the, the Blue Toad's name is Buckleberry. <laughs> wait, That's hilarious. Wait, what? Like the, the Blue what? Toad in New Super Mario Brothers U is named Buckleberry. <laughs> but the Yellow Toad, oh my, I don't remember that... what its name is. Oh my god, yeah, when you when, 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 when you Google Buckleberry Toad, it get the Mario Wiki page for Blue Toad character comes up. Yeah, I'm not making this up. I don't remember what the Yellow Toad's name is, though. Wait, wait, is there a citation for this? Oh my god, do you not believe me that much? <laughs> Buckleberry? Yeah, citation, MLA formats. Buckleberry? Oh, how do you like this? Oh, it's, it's a source. In. Oh, boom, I crushed it. <laughs> Ala Gold is the name of the yellow one. Ala Gold. Buckenberry and Ala Gold. Oh Sorry, Buckenberry. Uh, <laughs> who is why asking you, why for Why do you not believe me? I used to be a journalist. Why do, why, why do you do this? Because, you know, you know what? <laughs> Buckenberry just doesn't sound like a real name. Does it sound like a Mario name? Because that's all that no. matters. No. Okay. <laughs> it kind of doesn't, honestly. Not, yeah. I, I, yeah, I can Alex see it as a Mario name. 
<laughs> why do they feel? Why did they feel like they needed to name the blue toad? Why not? I don't know. Yeah, he's got a family. Yeah. Who's gonna Who's gonna be voicing him in the Mario movie? John Mulaney? King and Michael King and Michael Key. They said already. Of all yeah. the toads. Yeah, he's all the toads. Oh my god. <laughs> they, they, they're just gonna Especially pitch shift him Bucky ever Man. so slightly I'm, for each toad. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in on this. That. <laughs> Gosh. And it has to be someone else. It'll probably be his co-partner, Michael Key, or something. I don't know. It's uh, just uh, you mean Jordan Peele? Jordan Peele, that's what I meant. Sorry, I just said the name of the same guy again. Jordan yeah. Peele. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Um. Well, I think that kind of wraps up our, our little Pokemon segment here. Um. I, I had on my notes here to go into another uh, topic section for Legends Arceus, but I think we also kind of looped that into there as well. So we can skip that and move on to our last topic of the day, I guess. <laughs> um, so February was obviously a pretty big month for um, game announcements, directs, stuff like that. And obviously the direct was earlier this month, but at this point, a lot of us have already kind of talked and said our piece about the Direct, so we're going to go ahead and talk about the next piece of news that came, at least for me, the next big piece of news from February, which is the 3DS and Wii U eShops. Uh, they are closing permanently in the pretty near future. Um, and I, uh, you know, this is something that I feel like we all kind of accept is kind of eventually happen with all these sort of digital storefronts and stuff whether it be nintendo xbox playstation which i think correct me if i'm wrong but i think the ps vita digital storefront closed mm -hmm. at some point in the yep, last year did. or so as well yeah pour so, one out yep. for the vita yep. yeah um th this thing seems kind of par for the course whenever you're talking about digital consumption of video games specifically and i kind of wanted to go around the round table here for our last topic and kind of just you know, talk about our uh, experiences with the 3DS and Wii U eShops, starting with you, Kira, because I'm actually really curious what your answers for these are. Um, what was your favorite game from the 3DS and Wii U libraries? And if there's one game you would recommend to download before the shops close, what would they be? Oh, okay. Um, I guess my, you know, I put so many hours into New Leaf, however... Really, at the end of the day, uh, Fire Emblem Awakening is my favorite. When I think Ooh. of the 3DS, yes. Fire Emblem yeah. Awakening always comes to mind. And um, it yeah. wasn't, mm -hmm. it, like a lot of people, it wasn't my first Fire Emblem game. Um, but it was just, it was a game that was so needed, I think, in the franchise to really um, bring in new people. And I, I, whenever I'm playing Three Houses, it's just like, man, I wish I was playing Awakening right now. I mean, I love Three Houses, but that's not a diss at all to Three Houses. That's just how much I love Awakening. So, um, yeah, I, I would definitely say that game. Wii U, Crunchyroll app, maybe? <laughs> I'm not trying to be a butthole. Wow. I'm not trying to be oh, a, a butthole. But I'm just saying, you know. Uh, Slam. <laughs> I actually got a Wii U as a wedding gift back in like 2016 or something, and I was so excited for it. And then the only game I remember even being like remotely interested in was Splatoon. And you know, I put probably, you know, maybe only 40 hours into that. Um, mm. So I really did not play a lot of Wii U. And I don't think that's like a crazy thing to say given how many were sold, but. Um, yeah, really, Wii U can't really say much about, but 3DS definitely. Um, yeah, I like that pick. That was almost mine, but mine actually ended up being something different. Um, oh, I'm then... shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, considering Hell who yeah. I am as a person, right? Um, what would you recommend people to download before the shops close? Uh, that's really hard. I would say probably um, if people haven't gotten into Yokai Watch yet, probably that um i don't beca because the i think the second and third games i was are gonna really say you took mine yeah oh i'm sorry really expensive. Sorry. no you'll be able to t say way more about this because i've only played the first one <laughs> i haven't um, played it that's why i'm it's on the top of my head because i have to download it yeah i'm i'm in that the same boat I, i've only played the first one and just oh man like with this announcement there's just a flood of games that i'm thinking like oh i never picked up fire emblem echoes like is that game even though it didn't sell as well is that game gonna go up in price am i am i never gonna be able to play fire emblem echoes because of you know the store being closed and 
well, you know, it's not closed yet. I have time to do that. But there's just so many games that flood to mind um, between the Fire Emblem titles, um, between because I never actually played Fire Emblem uh, Fates Birthright. Um, Ooh, so okay. not only those games, just the flood of JRPGs I can think of, too. I think most of these games that I say, like, oh, I recommend you download are more of ones that are in the back of my mind that, like, I need to download <laughs> before it happens. But Well, yo Watch is a good one because, you know, the digital price is set, whereas physical, I mean, who knows, whatever that price is. Yeah, yeah really. Well, mm-hmm. I'm sure Sam will be able to elaborate way more on this. Expensive. I don't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I guess if you want to take it from there, Sam, you can go ahead. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, so I actually like really cannot decide my favorite 3DS game. I think I would just say uh, New Leaf because I have like 800 hours in it, but I also wow. really love Nintendo Dogs and Cats, and I really love um, Bravely Default, the original one, and I really love uh also awakening that 3ds is such like a a treasure trove of good games but Mm -hmm. i'm gonna say new leaf just because however like like kira mentioned if you're looking for like what do i need to buy before the store closes uh i would focus on the games that you're not going to have much hope of buying physically down the line and Mm. yokai watch 3 is one of them um, Yokai Watch 3 and both of the Yokai Watch blasters, if they're even in the eShop, I'm not sure if they are. They're both insanely expensive already as it is. They were hard to get at launch and now it's at least a couple hundred dollars. And there's also only like one Gorgeous. of them on eBay. So good luck. Oh my God. What <laughs> I have a question about them actually. Like, what is it that makes two, well, and specifically three, so like, hard, why was it hard to get at launch? If because Yokai Watch is yeah. not as popular, they were. Um, so, two there's technically three versions of two, but um, the first two versions that launched were and the original Yokai Watch were vastly overproduced. Uh, and then reactionary from that, three and blasters were extremely underproduced. So, there's just not a lot that. of copies floating around. I do have blasters. I enjoyed that game. Keep it suspensive. <laughs> yeah, now that I know this, I think I'm just going like, to hold on to that. <laughs> uh, and then Wii U, uh, I, I think I would say my favorite, and I'm going to exclude anything that's been ported already, so I'm going to say my favorite is Wind Waker HD. Um, but I like still am holding out a sliver of hope that it's going to come <laughs> to the Switch at some point. Yeah. So, me too, me too. If I, if I don't include that, I'm going to say Nintendo Land. Cause okay. Where is that on the Switch? Nintendo Land my can't question. be lost with time. Let it, let it live. Yeah, seriously. Yo, okay, so I, w- I was listening to you talk about your 3DS fix, and I was like, I am so shocked, because when I was, you know, thinking of the ones that I was going to pick last night, I am so shocked you didn't say Kate Icarus Uprising. Oh. oh, I love Kate Icarus Uprising. I also forgot to say... Link Between Worlds, which is one of my favorite Zelda games. But mm. there's just so many good games on the 3DS. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. There's I just love too the many. 3DS so much. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But yes, um, Kid Icarus Uprising is a, is a very good pick, too. Well, I guess to kick things off for me, my personal favorite game from the 3DS library was really hard to pick as well. Uh, like I was telling Kira, my first instinct was to pick uh, Fire Emblem Awakening, but then I thought. You know, is that really the game that I enjoyed the most out of everything that I played on the 3DS? Because I don't want to include, like, remakes. Like, my, also, one of my first instincts was to pick Ocarina of Time 3D because that was awesome whenever that first came out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I wanted for these picks for them to be truly exclusive to the console that they were released on. So I didn't do that. I didn't do, like, a lot of other th- other stuff. But Awakening was definitely one of the first picks. Smash Brothers, I thought, was up there but it was just unfortunate that the wii u version came out not too long after that because i didn't really have that much time in 3ds version compared to the wii u version so that kind of disqualified that one for me but i ended up landing on kid icarus uprising and you know for as much wrist pain i had to go through to play for that game through completion uh i remember having a really great time with uprising everything about that game just felt like super polished and it was 
it was like using the system to its fullest potential. And the 3D effects were great. The visuals themselves were awesome. The music was so good. And I just love the story. And I just remember getting so immersed into the game to the point where I actually remember plugging in headphones just so I could get <laughs> that much more into the game, which says a lot because I never really did that at all with my 3DS just because I didn't, like, who, headphones. Like, what the heck? It has speakers. Like, what? I, anyway, maybe that's normal for other people, but it definitely wasn't for me. So, anyway, if you're listening and haven't played Uprising yet, play it. It's amazing. So, yeah. 3DS Library had some bangers. You haven't played it? Oh my I god! Know. It's <laughs> because when the announcement happened, every it's like Twitter kept like being like, "Oh my god, Kid Icarus Uprising! This is the one game you need to download." And I just like, I hate to say this, I completely forgot about it. I forgot that it existed just because we haven't seen Kid Icarus new like new games in like a while. So I hope that one doesn't shoot up in price anytime mm. too soon. I will, I, like I will buy you the digital copy. That game is just worth playing. <laughs> I, I swear to you, it is so good. Um, but yeah, the 3DS library had some bangers, but um, Uprising was my favorite, which brings me to my favorite Wii U game, which might catch some people off guard except for Sam. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to preface this by saying I didn't include anything that isn't already on the Switch or anything that wasn't a remake like Wind Waker HD or Twilight Princess HD as much as I want to include those. Um, again, like the 3DS library. I wanted, something, I wanted it to be something truly exclusive to the Wii U and I landed on Nintendo Land as my favorite ah. Wii U game. Oh, that's a good That's game. That's not a yeah. surprise to people. It's a good game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it just it's doesn't. It, it, to me, it's beloved, and it feels more like a cult classic than something that's like, oh yeah, dude, the Wii U, Nintendo Land, fantastic. This is the best game on the Wii U. Um, but yeah, uh, the reason being for me at this point, uh, we already have most of the bigger hits on the Wii U's library on Switch anyway. So, aside from a few stragglers, Twilight Princess HD, my beloved. Um, <laughs> and to that end, I just feel like. The truly, like the biggest, truly still exclusive title for the Wii U that I remember having the best experiences with was Nintendo Land. And obviously, I can go on and on about all the great memories I have playing with friends and stuff at parties. And to this day, um, this game might still stand to be one of the best uses of the Wii U's asymmetrical multiplayer that, that it ever got. So, um, oh, yeah. Bring it to the Switch, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> let it live, like Sam said. <laughs> and, um, Lastly, you know, for a game that I'd recommend people to download before the shops go down, probably anything under the virtual console umbrella oh, of games. Yeah. Um, that would be my personal recommendation of the bunch would probably be Pokemon Pinball, Ruby and Sapphire, <laughs> simply because <laughs> I love that game and getting it to play on the Wii U is way better than having to find a Game Boy Advance cartridge for it, which I also have, but, you know. It's it, it's a matter of convenience more than anything else. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Point. Anything under the virtual console games, I think, are a good suggestion. Simply because we don't know if Nintendo has plans to ever adopt the model of virtual console again. Uh, mostly because it seems like they s are super heavily leaning into the idea of Nintendo Switch Online. And, you know, making them available via that service instead. So, yeah. My recommendation would be any of the virtual console games for sure. Um, but, you know, enough about my recommendations, right? And speaking of Pokemon Pinball, yo, Schiller, would you like oh, to man. tell I've us your big, libraries here? I, I, I've had this big smirk on my face, and I'm trying not to giggle <laughs> into the microphone. So, so when I recommend a game, does it have to be my favorite game, or can I just, like, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> it can be recommend whatever. something that I don't think anyone's ever going to play ever again otherwise? Yeah, go for Do it. Do it, you will. All right, all right. I, I feel like everyone should play Dr. Luigi once in their lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. almost uh, put that. I almost gotta, put that. Oh, you almost. <laughs> almost, but you know, you're you not one enough. enough to put it on there. <laughs> Everyone should play Dr. Luigi. I, I, it's, it's such like, it, it's such a, I, I don't, you can interpret this as a good or a bad statement. It's such a Wii U game. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just anything that in, encapsulates, like, what the Wii U could have been, I think it's probably Dr. Luigi. <laughs> Listen, Luigi, to celebrate the year of Luigi, they awarded him with a doctorate. Yeah, you, that was supposed mm -hmm. to celebrate. <laughs> wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Medical degree. Hang on. It was supposed to celebrate the year of Luigi, right? Do you remember that it came out on December 31st? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wow. Wow. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a fun game. 
<laughs> and it's the, it's the first HD Doctor Mario game, technically. Uh, but it's the only one. <laughs> but, <laughs> but otherwise, like the, the 3DS library is so fascinating because it has a lot of major games on it. Like it has a Smash Brothers. It has a bunch of Mario sports. It has games like Kid Icarus. It has the, the probably the best <clears throat> Kirby games I've ever played. But oh yeah, most of the games that are on it. I have no reason to go back to them because they have superior sequels on the Switch. Like, Mario Kart 7 is a phenomenal game, but 90% of those tracks are about to show up in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so, like, I don't need to go back to Mario Kart 7. (laughs) Or, probably between Pokemon X and Y and Sun and Moon, I have about 500, 600 hours logged in my 3DS. But I have no need to go back to those games because I've got Pokemon Sword and Shield. You know, unless I, I really want to catch a Bruxish in Sun and Moon, and you can't use that in Sun and Shield, <laughs> I have no reason to go back to Sun and Moon. So I, I have a hard time recommending a 3DS game because most of that stuff is is available on other systems. So I'm, I'm trying to look at uh, what my options are here, and I think something akin to... Pushmo, something that's digital exclusive probably makes a bit more sense, and I feel Ooh. weird recommending that because I don't even have it myself, and I'm just gonna go and download it after this podcast. <laughs> but but virtual console is a good point too because Game Boy Virtual Console games aren't regularly re-released. So if we're gonna go on that mm-hmm. front, I think Pokemon Puzzle Challenge is a strong recommendation. Ooh, but also the Gen Two Pokemon games are strongly recommended as well because you can transfer those Pokemon to Pokemon Bank, which you can then transfer to Pokemon Home. And actually, when they announced that the 3DS and Wii U eShops were going to close down, all of the Pokemon games started to top the list. Because yep. people yep. were like, I, I got I to gotta transfer my Pokemon before the server shut down. So mm-hmm. that's my recommendation. Otherwise, any sort of niche 3DS game that came out toward the end of, the life, of its life cycle is going to be my recommendation too. So like Mario Sports Superstars, I'm going to recommend. Or like Captain Toad <laughs> on the 3DS, I'm going to recommend. All, all those games that came out at the end, you're not going to really be able to find physical copies of them, so you might want to get them digital before the shops close. Because if you're going to try to get it physical, I feel like those are the games are going to go that are going to go up in price. I don't think Mario Kart Seven is going to go up in price. I don't think Super Mario 3D Land is going to go up in price. But they, they they still sell the bundles with Mario Kart Seven. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I feel like oh, those true. games that came out at the very end, like Mario Maker for 3DS, Yoshi's Woolly World for 3DS, I feel like those are going to be expensive. So you should probably get them sooner rather than later. That's my recommendation. Yeah, and Doc the Week. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, but my favorite Wii U game? Yes, yeah, it's unfair <laughs> to say because a lot of my favorite Wii U games went to Switch. Uh, yep. Like 3D World was probably my favorite Wii U game, but that went to Switch. Uh, so I gotta go with Nintendo Land at that point as well. As well, and then favorite 3DS game? I don't know. Yeah. I, I have such strong <laughs> memories with the Wii U because. I remember, like, Splatoon came out, and the servers weren't doing so hot, so I just painted the tutorial level for two hours. That's what I did! (laughs) Uh, So I I have stronger memories with the Wii U. The the 3DS, I I really like it. Kid Icarus Uprising's fantastic. The the Kirby games are probably my favorite, though, so I I gotta recommend those. Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot. But Wii U, I I actually have stronger memories for, even though the 3DS, I acknowledge, is, is the more successful of the two. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Those are my recommendations. Kirby and, and uh, Nintendo Land. And Dr. Luigi. Nice. And Dr. Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've, I've actually never played Dr. Luigi. It's fun, but, like, you know, you're not really... If you play Dr. Mario, you're fine. You're not missing too much. But I did oh. enjoy it. I, okay. I liked it. <laughs> it's, it's Dr. Mario, but everything's an L-shaped pill instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what it is. That sounds like my worst nightmare. I'm already bad enough at Dr. Mario. <laughs> Throwing the L shapes in. Oh. oh my goodness. Well, I guess you could say you could take the L. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <This is probably laughs> done. Show's over. <laughs> um, Alex! Ah. Let's hear it. Um, if you don't say Zelda anything, I'm going to be disappointed. Same for you, Amanda. I mean... <laughs> I feel like I was I'm I did actually while I we were everyone was talking looked up my 3ds and Wii U memories because I hadn't really done that. Apparently, uh, New Leaf is the most played thing I played on the 3ds, which is surprising. Um, it's not my favorite game from the 3ds stuff because it has to go to Ocarina 3D, 
like a hundred percent ocarina nice. 3d i've played i think i've played ocarina so much in general in life but like 3d i played a bunch and i will still stand by the notion that ocarina 3d is the best version of ocarina of time to play period uh if you're gonna 100%. play an official That's, version yeah it is no. that a link between worlds is really good uh as well but i ocarina 3d is i think my top uh for that i just all the zelda games on there were great uh i would still say ocarina 3d like download it and play that before sh uh the store the shops close like that's for me it's that apparently we my top one was youtube which <laughs> <laughs> me too actually i don't know it. why what or the how heck? No, it's, it's pre because, smart TVs. It's because I was in college. Right? I was. I yeah. don't. I don't well, remember. I no, was in actually, college at this point. Like I got my Wii U when I was in college. Like I had a laptop. I had a phone. <laughs> what the fuck was I was I using YouTube on the Wii U for? Um, I don't understand that. Um, but I will say for the like the Wii U, I do. Uh, I mean, Nintendo Land was god tier. But aside from like the the Zelda games like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD which were really good I do really like the virtual console on the Wii U for 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 the most part there are some games that are really really well done uh emulation on that uh like the DS game emulation was really incredible uh I also really liked the fact that we had Game Boy Advance stuff on there. The N64 emulation specifically with Ocarina and Majora sucked. But besides that, <laughs> um, yeah. but I I really like think just like the the Zelda games that are on Wii U are the my big uh, ones because like they still haven't shown up yet. Like that's the big thing. Uh, I also you can this is where you can get a lot of the Metroid games and like the original that's true uh stuff like that like his game boy emulation i would or, and game boy virtual console i'd love to see on switch i don't know why it hasn't shown up yet honestly because it's easy it'd be like super nintendo but it just i don't know if they're if i don't know if they're willing to do that um i don't know yeah it's it's one of those kind of things um but yeah i'm gonna okay. i'm gonna stick with just zelda whole way through zelda all the way through like and it. and also youtube for some reason yeah, <laughs> you're definitely. Like, I'm surprised because we had Kira with Crunchyroll, Sam with YouTube, and you with YouTube also. <laughs> well, because well, with the Wii U, one of my favorite features was that you could use the gamepad like a remote for your TV. So I did that. I would, I would, oh, I wow. would be my smart TV. I didn't have a smart TV. And... Why I have it on for YouTube though? I didn't use YouTube. I thought on on. In the my Wii head, U. I don't remember doing that, but apparently Same. I did for like Same. a thousand hours. So. <laughs> Wow. Hours. A thousand hours of just YouTube. My, I, I don't had... know. All I know is it was my my highest hour count. Yeah, it was <laughs> the same for me. But it was. I think my Wii U stuff was like a hundred ish hour. Hold on. Uh, it was apparently a hundred and seventeen hours, which is a hundred and sixteen hours more than I thought. Was I the only one that watched Netflix on their 3ds? Yes. Potentially. Oh, I did yes. that. Oh, I actually, <laughs> Why would I, I watch Stranger Things on on the 3DS when I can watch them on my Wii U? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I fully took a bath while, like, I don't like that. No, that's There's smart. There's nothing it's better so much than safer. a warm bath. Yeah, it's it's so much safer to have your 3DS by the bathtub than like the freaking Wii U gamepad because <laughs> oh, I did that too. Though. And... Oh, Wii U well. gamepad with Crunchyroll, <laughs> taking a warm bath. Oh. <laughs> I'm so this glad your gamepad will stay connected oh that my far. God. Luxury living with Kira. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like, well, like I. I have no shame, like, I, you know, I would take, if I was playing a Wii U game, it's like, oh man, I really gotta go to the bathroom, you just take that sucker in the bathroom, and you're, your experience is just so seamless. And that's on self-care. <laughs> seamless life experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Did that's any why I like the Switch, too. 
Did anybody use the video calling feature on the Wii U? It had I a video once. calling feature? I, I, yeah. I also did that it did. once. It did. I think Miyamoto I tried and to, and, and it never what? worked. I, I did once around the, the launch of the Wii U. As a matter of fact, you've yeah. given me a video idea. Let me write that on the whiteboard. <laughs> we can oh, all no. call each other later. Yeah, you guys, you guys want oh, to? Man. You mind showing your, your beautiful faces in my video? Sure. Yeah, sure okay, why not? Sure. Yes. Why I'll not? bring out my I'm Wii U. I'm writing it on the whiteboard, so I have to do it. I literally will probably probably go why is this a thing and why did i not know about it until now but sure well when the wii u <laughs> came out i gave out my friend code to like whoever wanted it on youtube and it was awful because people would like to try and start video calls with me all the time and i'm like i don't want a video call with <laughs> i'm trying to watch you youtube for a thousand goodbye. hours <laughs> yeah wow and that's wow. why i don't accept friend requests from strangers anymore <laughs> even yeah. though lesson learned yeah uh, although I actually thought video calling was a really cool feature. Um, it was. At the time, it, it was we, really we cool. We don't have a, ever since uh, the 3DS and the Wii U, no more camera on our video game system. Yeah, which you I'm can't scan the camera. Honestly, I'm I can't fine take, with it. can't take selfies. I can't <laughs> take I can't pictures put of my conventions face on little, I'm at. Like, helicopter drones. You can't scan a QR code. Yeah. <laughs> can't film the Lady Gaga concert with my 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, when I do theater and I see people holding up their Wii U's. <laughs> oh my god, I have away. a quick story. Oh no. I, at my high school, every once in a while, uh, out in the area where we'd have our lunch, some, sometimes people would be playing music, like over, over loudspeakers oh, and stuff. And so okay. sometimes there would be dance groups that would go up on a stage and do like little dance offs. And sometimes, you know, the music would play and there wouldn't be dance groups. So I, being the fool that I am, would go up and try to initiate one. And we'd oh, just do no. like all these stupid <laughs> oh, little God. dance moves. Until oh, people, that's adorable. Until people who actually knew how to dance would come up. And then, you know, you do the whole thing where there's a big group of people and you take turns. And so, you know, I go in and do my thing. And I do the thing with the legs that makes it look like, like a diamond switching back and forth. I don't know if you guys have <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, so oh, I would boy. do that. Amazing. I would do that. And then someone else would do like that trick where you you put your hand on the ground and then you spin around and your like legs go around you and stuff. Yeah. And then I, I, I did some really weird, stupid things. And the only footage I have of that, I think, is sitting on my Nintendo 3DS. Oh, <laughs> Otherwise, somewhere That's on incredible. my Nintendo 3DS as well mm. is a picture of a time when my honors U.S. history teacher was, was supposed to be teaching class, but he was on hold in the middle of a phone call at the same time, too, and he thought the phone call was going to end before he had to start teaching, so he did the entire wow. lecture with the phone to his ear. Wait, oh waiting for God. someone to pick up, so I took up. I snapped the picture with my 3DS. You of had him to document Shiller. it somehow. Yeah, Shiller he was great. great. He was fantastic. Otherwise, I did use my 3DS for those two purposes, and there might be other random pictures on there as well, but I am not going to remember them. Yashiller, we should go. <laughs> if I ever go to LA, we should go clubbing, uh, like go to a dance club, and bring your 3DS, and we will just film all your dancing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. I've got, and you'll get street pass yeah. with each oh other. My God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no shame. No shame. I, I used to do that stuff all the time. <laughs> and we and love that for you. <laughs> even though I wasn't great at dancing, it's a, it's a, it's a pleasurable memory. It's that okay. I, I'm not going to dance with you either. All right. Fine, you guys. I'll do it. I'll you film a, a Pax East vlog with my 3DS. <laughs> do it. Yeah. You won't oh, forward. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. Um... <laughs> What were you talking about? Um, I don't know. Amanda, what you 3ds and Wii U. We, 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 yeah, we have Amanda. Well, I don't know Chris. how I can top. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I can top any of those conversations. You don't have to top <laughs> anything. What Wii U game do you recommend, and is it Doctor Luigi? <laughs> well, you know, sadly, I never played Doctor Luigi. Everyone so... should play it once in their life. This sounds That's like a saying. video <laughs> idea cooking up right now. All right, let me go right on. All the of us board. play Doctor <laughs> Luigi with Yoshi. I do. It has play it now. It has online. It does have online. I remember oh, that. It does have oh, online. Great, yeah. we can play it for go. one whole year. <laughs> True. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry, as you were saying, Amanda, go ahead. <laughs> so, I, you know, I of course want to recommend, like, Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD because they are just so pretty and they are the best versions of those games by far yes. um but i used i primarily used my wii u as the virtual console as well and so i would say games that are either t games that may still be on like switch online but you don't know how long it's going to be on there and 
So the games that would be hard to find, like Earthbound or Minish Cap, those two for sure, I would say go ahead and download them so you at least have them because you don't know when you'll be able to play it, like off the Switch, like if it if they take Earthbound off the Switch or if they never make Minish Cap available on the Switch, you'll have a way to find it because I think the cartridge for that one is like it ain't cheap, a few hundred dollars, yeah. 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 Oh boy. And then on the 3DS, um, I think I'd get my butt handed to me if I didn't mention Metroid being on there. So I have to say that for sure. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. Samus Returns is on the 3DS. Still haven't and then, it. you know, I have it, but I haven't played it either. Because, like, the thing is, the 3DS, even when I had the 3D turned off, I would still get a migraine playing it sometimes. So, like, I had to be really careful with a lot of the things that I played. And that would be one that would make me prone to a migraine but i could do things like pokemon and be all right because it wasn't like a lot going on at the same time so i played a lot of x and y and sun and sun and moon those were both 3ds games i think it's all starting to run together after a while (laughs) (laughs) but those two i really enjoyed and then i would you know i'd say new leaf but there's already an animal crossing game so i'm trying to think of stuff that like the opportunity to play these doesn't exist elsewhere so i would say just check the virtual console for any like classic games that may be difficult to find otherwise yeah that's a good that's a good recommendation i'm glad that you mentioned zelda as well yeah you've done me proud (laughs) yeah i i I can't just not mention zelda (laughs) i mean I, i just love that we're talking about twilight princess hd in 2022 in current year I'm we've actually in the talked middle of about this. We've right already now, talked about this on the podcast too. <laughs> Granted, my my first Wii U panic buy from all this was Star Fox Zero. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, I wanted that to be good. I <sighs> really wanted it to be good. Girl, same. I, I love mean, Star Fox so much. <laughs> we've talked about it before. Where's in the past. Star Fox? It's, it's, it's got its own. Where's Star Fox identity. Adventures on Switch? Yeah, uh, seriously. Right. That's a good question. Where? <laughs> that should be on there. Get on it. Come on. Seriously. Um, Tris, I think you're the last one, right? If my math is correct. Alrighty. So, round us up. I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll start with favorite games, because I had an easier time trying to figure out that one. <laughs> sure, go for it. <laughs> then, then I did the recommendations. So, obviously, there's there's a... I, I, I tried to do the same thing that you guys are mentioning of, you know, try not to go through games that are, you know, available on some other platforms already. So, like... You know, while I want to sit here and say Wind Waker HD and Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U, like, Wind Waker HD is also, you know, on, or not non HD, but Wind Waker is also on GameCube. And mm-hmm. Super Mario 3D World, in a much better form, is on Switch. Um, but, so I think for specifically Wii U, even though it had a remake, I had to really sit there and think about this one. Because, even though it already has not only a, a, a remake, but also a sequel. I still think Mario Maker on the Wii U is still the best version of that game. Hmm. Um, I really, I, I liked Mario Maker 2, but it didn't hold me that much. But I really liked what the original Mario Maker had to offer, especially when it had, like, a use for Amiibo collectors. Amiibo costumes? It had all, yeah, it had all those Amiibo costumes. It had all those, like, extra updates for all the fun crossover costumes and extra content and promos. And there was a lot going on with that game that made it just feel very fun. That even though Mario Maker 2 went on past that, it also left out a lot of features that made the first game really fun. So, I and I didn't even get into 2 as much. I really liked 1. I thought I would really like 2, but it didn't, it didn't hold me as much in the end. I guess, I don't know, maybe that made that much of a difference, not being able to make as fun, wacky themed levels. But, yeah. Um, so Mario Maker on Wii U, because despite its remake and sequel, it's still unique enough. For 3DS, uh, Yoshi mentioned like Mario Kart 7 earlier, and as great as that one is, it's it, you know we're going to see all the content from 7 again soon enough anyway. Yeah, like it holds um, up well, but there's no reason to go but, back and play it right now. Yeah. Y- yeah, mm. yeah. So I would actually have to go with Kirby Planet Robobot. Nice. Uh, that, was the, that was actually the first Kirby game I was able to play on release. Because I had, the year Planet Robobot came out, I had gotten into the Kirby series like at the start of that year, playing Kirby 64. And then, like, a month after I finished that, they announced Robobot. I'm like, I'm going to get to play one of these, like, new and fresh. That's exciting. <laughs> and I could not put that game down. Uh, Robobot was a fantastic Kirby game. And I've gone back and replayed that game at least two times now. 
and it is my it is still my favorite Kirby game in general. So that's definitely uh, one that I hope uh, is is remembered well. It's it's so good, man. Yeah, it's so mm-hmm. good. I've heard nothing it, but it, great it things about re- it. It is really fun. It it is really good. Would you um, s- as for recommendations? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, if, if were you gonna ask about that or? Yeah, I was just gonna. Never mind. Just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> just making sure. Um, for recommendations, for I mean, we we've all touched upon the Virtual Console, so I'm not I'm not gonna say too much there because obviously the Virtual Console libraries on both of those consoles are actually very very strong. I mean, all three Pokemon Ranger games are on Wii U for example like that's incredible i only learned that like a week ago <laughs> i definitely need to go get all three of this um there's a large library of virtual console that's gonna disappear so those are definitely up there but to not echo what everybody else already said um i actually couldn't decide between two specific games for the 3ds because uh yo Schiller mentioned uh games that came out late in the lifespan and it kind of made me think of a few more because originally I was gonna say A Link Between Worlds because that is still the best classic, n- the best new classic Zelda we've gotten in a very long time. I agree. As much as I liked, as I, as much as I liked the Link's Awakening remake, the fact that Link Between Worlds was, was a new game that felt classic made it feel so special. 100%. And it's disappointing that that's gonna be inaccessible soon. I mean, that game you could still kind of find physically, so that one is less of a problem. But obviously, you know, prices are going to start to go up when they stop fully printing 3DS games. And, you know, most GameStops already don't sell them, for example. So it's only going to get harder to find. But the other 3DS title I wanted to mention here was the Mario and Luigi games. More specifically, mm. like, yeah, uh, the more recent remakes. Because Alpha Dream's gone. We're not getting more Mario and Luigi games, more than likely. So the four games in that series that are accessible on the 3DS are kind of the swan song of the series at that point, and have some really, really good moments, especially the two remakes that are, honestly, that sold so poorly, that's kind of why half a dream went out of business. Bowser's Inside Story is going to be really rare. So, like, if you're thinking about it, you get it now. Mm Yeah, like, it's it's fantastic ways to still experience those games, especially the two remakes, if you never got to play the original ones on DS and Game Boy Advance, but also to see what they changed with those in the remakes and the new modes that came with them. They were honestly really fun. And I still highly recommend those as games to play if you're an RPG fan or, you know, any of the Mario RPG games. If you're a fan of any of those, I think they're so worth it. Even if they may not have the same level of cartoony charm that they did originally. Um, And then I guess keeping on the Mario RPG theme, well, in quotes, for Wii U, I actually said Paper Mario Color Splash. Because while it is not the Paper Mario game that everybody wanted... That game is still really charming and fun in its own right. Music's Black really yet. good. The art style's really nice. And it came out, like, six months before the Wii U, like, died. Yeah. <laughs> before the Switch came out. <laughs> that was one of the last Wii U games. And a lot of people missed out on it. But I think it actually made a pretty fun use of the gamepad. And in general, I mean, it, it's... Sure, you know, it's more of the Paper Mario era with a two-focus on paper. But the writing's really fun. It's entertaining. Yeah, I, I, I just highly recommend that one, because a lot of people don't like the more modern Paper Mario games, and they write it off before trying it. Nice. Yeah, Color Splash I thought was pretty pretty good. I haven't played it. You know, it's, it's, it stood the test of time pretty well. Yeah. I mean, at least as far as I'm concerned. I know people don't agree with that, but, <laughs> you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, I think it was pretty good for what it was. Um, all right. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I think that's going to do it uh, for today's discussion. So thank you guys so much for joining me today for this month's episode. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to do my best to make sure that this podcast is run on a monthly basis and gets regularly updated over on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And that way you can listen to these discussions in whichever way you prefer. Anyway, uh, we're pretty much at the end of here. But before we go, I wanted to take a second, go around the round table here one last time. And give each of you about five seconds to tell us about yourself and where our listeners can find you on the internet. Starting with you, Alex. Ah, I am ap- <laughs> I, am so- I am so sorry for all the dumb things that I was saying today. But if you want to see more of that, I'm Luca underscore Starks on pretty much everything. That's pretty all I got. I stream. <laughs> I say dumb things on the internet. I'm just I'm dumb on the internet. It's great. I think. That makes you relatable. I don't... <laughs> sure. I'm relatable. Yeah. I have one brain cell. 
well. I don't have it right now. I gotta find it. And I'm real hungry. <laughs> oh, yeah, same here. Um, Me too. <laughs> Kira, what, what about you? Five seconds, go. Okay, five seconds. Hi, you can find me on Twitter at Kira, K-I-I-R-A, Hedgehog. Um, and yeah, my YouTube channel is Ginger Gaiden, where I just do videos on life in Japan and anime. That's it. Anime. Uh, Sam, let's hear it. Hi, I'm Sam, or a Nintendo fangirl, and I talk about Nintendo, and you can find all of my things by googling Nintendo fangirl. I'm on everything. You forgot the part where you said, uh, you forgot the part where you intentionally start Twitter arguments, right? Because, like, yeah, that's also that's another thing you do. Yeah, that's been happening a lot for me lately. <laughs> I'm starting a lot of arguments on Twitter. Totally it's on just, purpose. 100%. You know, sometimes it's really fun because I can kind of like take a step back and just let people argue with themselves, but on my tweets. <laughs> and then my mentions are just angry people for a week straight. Yeah. I think we're now at like three weeks straight, though, so that's not my favorite oh, thing in the world. It is what it is. Yeah, you give your nightly entertainment. But I, I think most of my tweets are pretty lighthearted and shouldn't. Yeah, no, I'm, most, I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I know. But, but if anyone wants to follow me, don't be scared of the random angry people in my Twitter comments. It's yeah. okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> and Amanda, where can we find you? Me? Can find me. You can find me on Twitter at Amanda Van Heil. I stream on Twitch at Panda Princessa. You can find me on Zelda Universe TV hosting zelda news and hosting the shine sparkers podcast Woo! yeah love <laughs> love love watching you stream whenever i can um tris you can find me over on twitter at toon tris uh or over on game explain making a ton of daily content <laughs> like today right super <laughs> eventful yeah all the pokemon <laughs> stuff i was busy <laughs> yeah i think we're all a little exhausted right now um, speaking of exhausted, <laughs> Yo Schiller, round us out. Hello and <sighs> goodbye. I'm Yo Schiller. I do content on my channel. I'm about to get into the streak of trying to do videos every single day. And I also edit for a variety of other channels, including Arlo. And I've been editing the Splatoon 2 bios in Chuck Conroy's recent Splatoon 2 Let's Play. So you can see my name pop up on all sorts of other places. Otherwise, look for the guy with the Yoshi hat. It's probably me. Nice. <laughs> awesome. I need to get you a Buckenberry hat, too. I have a blue Yoshi hat. Oh god, kind of like you my really? Buckingberry. Yeah, have, have I not shown you my blue Yoshi hat? I don't think so. Oh, I got a blue one and a black one. Yeah, maybe you should pull that up whenever I call you on my Wii U. You got it. <laughs> it's on the whiteboard. It's on the whiteboard. I won't do it. You'll pick right. Wii U blue. Awesome. <laughs> And with that, that concludes our discussion. So once again, if you're still watching or listening, thank you for making it this far. And I look forward to hearing you guys' thoughts in the comments below, Discord, wherever else you guys have shared your thoughts with me in the past. We'll be back next month for some more discussion. But for now, there's only one thing left to say before we take off. And that is, of course, as always, I'm Alec and Stefan. I will see you all again real soon. Bye-bye!